In 2008, I moved to Johannesburg, South Africa to work in its financial sector. I didn't really know what to expect. I knew that South Africa was a developing country and that it suffered from a deep socioeconomic divide. But the World Cup was only two years away and I was really excited to call it my new home. After spending a couple months there, however, I started to notice a trend. That South Africans in my community were really worried about their country. They were worried about crime and poverty and the state of education and the state of public health. They were concerned that the country was spiraling out of control and that there was little that they could do to help it. This is a snapshot of where I lived, which is a typically affluent neighborhood in Johannesburg. Each house stands behind massive security walls, which growing up in New York was really new to me. I found it kind of ironic that everyone had such negative views about their country when they couldn't even see past their own front yards. Was it really that bad? And then there's the news media. The more sensationalist newspaper, radio, and television news I came across, the more I too started to think, God, this country could go down. But I wasn't being fair. I'd only been around for a couple months, and I owed it to myself to see for myself. So I went on a journey and visited parts of Johannesburg that I was urged not to, like the inner city and like high-density urban sprawls like Deep Suit Township. And what I discovered was a completely different reality, far from what I was led to expect. These communities were vibrant and full of positive energy. There was actually this sense of community on the street level that I hadn't yet experienced in South Africa. I finally started to form my own opinion about the country. To me, South Africa was a country in transition, still finding its feet as one of the youngest democracies in the world. The more time I spent in developing communities, the more I was drawn to the youth, Nelson Mandela's born free generation. I was inspired by their art scene, by their creativity, and by their passion for self-expression. This was finally the part of South Africa that I wanted to be a part of. And then it occurred to me that nearly not enough of the good news stories that are occurring in these communities were coming out in the media. And these youth were the perfect people to deliver it. So with that in mind, I started Umuzi Photo Club. It's an organization that works with young people to create media that speaks to what's actually happening in the communities by them for South Africa. We started running workshops in communities all across the city. One of our first students was Tapalo Matsumi, who at the time was 18 years old and really, really couldn't wait to get out of high school so that he could start pursuing a career as a graphic designer. His artful portrayal of how his fellow community members were dealing with their adversities was inspirational. His photos expressed a reality that wasn't one to be pitied or feared, but rather to be respectfully understood. Each set of workshops ended with a community exhibition, which was attended by community members and even sometimes local politicians. We also hosted exhibitions in the affluent suburbs. For many, it was a view into the South Africa that they feared. For our students, it was a proud moment to share the reality with the other half. But it didn't stop there. Newspaper editors started publishing our work. Television and radio producers started asking our students to come on the air to share their perspective on important issues such as service delivery, teenage pregnancy, and education. Tapello and his peers were invited to London to exhibit, where they also appeared on the BBC's World Service, reaching 200 million listeners. We had successfully created a space for youth media in South Africa, and barriers were just starting to come down. The question was now, where do we take it from here? What's next for Tapello and all the others who have given so much? <clears throat> how can we leverage this platform to make more impact, and how can we make that impact sustainable? Our response was to transform our charity-based project into a social enterprise that offers creative services to paying clients like corporates and NGOs who are looking for a fresh new perspective on media and communications. So with that in mind, 
we put together our own campaign called I Am An Activist. The purpose of the campaign was to show South Africa that we are a competent, youth-driven, socially focused media agency. The campaign included what we do best, a couple exhibitions and film screenings, a large format street installation throughout Johannesburg, which was a really cool opportunity for us to engage in the new emerging culture of art in the inner city Johannesburg, and the first publication of our magazine, which was something our students were really excited to share with their peers. The campaign spotlighted Umuzi as a really competent media organization and brought us into 2013 with a whole series of exciting client-funded projects. Tapello recently graduated from one of the top photojournalism schools in South Africa, probably even the continent, and is now our full-time employee. Him and many other young media makers are our key employees. We rely on them. Proceeds from their work continue to help us provide the youth perspective in the media. What's amazing about Amuzi is that it connects many different people from many different cultures, many different worlds, by, by using media to break down racial and social barriers. I want to share the story with you and urge you all to seek out the truth for yourself. We can all work together to build a better world, but it's really important that we have a clear picture of it first. Thank you.